What's up, everybody? It's your pal, the coin guy, uh, coming to you with the first episode of my new series that I'm calling Pocket Change. Uh, this particular episode is going to be about the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Uh, the intent of this series is that I will talk about various kind of battles from history, the people who took part of them, and then the coins with some relation to that battle. So, for example, what sort of coins would the soldiers that took place in this battle have used? Now, quick note, because I know I will get comments about this, uh, I'm well aware that not all cultures in history have pockets, so they wouldn't have necessarily had, you know, these coins on them per se. Uh, I'm also aware that uh, there might be some exceptions, for example, today with Hastings, we're going to talk a lot about Anglo-Saxon, Viking, uh, Norman, and Carolingian coins, but obviously there may have been a couple other things mixed in there, so please don't be like, but actually, remember there's that one hoard from 1972 of Sasanian coins found in the north of the Netherlands? Yes, I do know about that hoard, but that's kind of a weird exception, uh, so we're looking at the bigger picture. So with that in mind... Let's get into it. Let's get this show started and uh, talk about the Battle of Hastings. So, in 1066, William I of Normandy, uh, one of the Dukes of Normandy, uh, a descendant of Rollo, that guy, okay, not that exact guy, but you know, you get the point. The The character in the show of Vikings was based on Rollo of Norman legend. Uh, he invaded. Now, King Harold II, or Harold uh, Goodvinson of England, was dealing with a uh, succession crisis because uh, Edward the Confessor had passed away without child. So Harold stepped in. He was dealing with his brother. Uh, he was also dealing with an invasion uh, from the Vikings, from uh, Harold, I'm going to butcher this name, Harold uh, Harad, Haradria, 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 sorry if Norwegians can help me on this one, I'd much appreciate it. Uh, this of course culminating with the Battle of uh, Stamford Bridge, which many people maybe have heard of. It's considered uh, by many to be when the quote-unquote Viking Age ended. So, William landed with his forces, and we know that they faced off uh, in October of 1066. Uh, the battle took basically all day. Uh, England holding the high ground. As we all know from Star Wars, you should always hold the high ground. And with William being triumphant at the end of the day, partially due to his use of cavalry and feigned retreats, where they pretend to retreat, the... English forces would go after them, and then that would cause them to break the lines, making them weaker. Uh, Harold Goodwinson was killed in the battle, allegedly with an arrow through the eye, which that's a, that's a, I mean, it's kind of a good way to go because, you know, you'll die basically instantly, um, but that's, that's a video for another day. Now, there's also some legends that he may have survived, may have become a monk at a local uh, abbey, something like that, but that is neither here nor there. And that's a conversation for another day. Um, as far as the forces, um, for Harold's forces, it would have been uh, mostly uh, freemen, so basically local levies and uh, house gallows, so basically his kind of companions. And then on the Norman side, uh, you would have had basically levies of the various lords in Normandy and France, as well as some mercenary forces. Now, it's, it's key to remember as well, the Normans brought cavalry. This is heavy cavalry, uh, which definitely provided to be a decisive uh, aspect in the battle. So, with regards to the coins, let's look into them now. Uh, on the side of William the Conqueror, we have a lot of uh, Carolingian-inspired coins from people like uh, Pippin the Short, uh, who was one of the first Carolingian kings to adopt the uh, Dernier, so basically their version of the solidus or the pound and uh, was actually very much a inspiration for a lot of coins later on and these were very simple you see uh, pi pi meaning pippin and then on the other side uh rex francorum or king of the franks 
Uh, so very simple design. This then leads to people like Charlemagne, right here, uh, who has the same sort of thing, Carolus Rex Francorum, King of the Franks, Charles, King of the Franks. And then uh, we get other designs very similar. Uh, Richard I, uh, who was the Duke of Normandy before William, has the same sort of thing, uh, Ricardus or Richard in Latin on one side, and then uh, Roto Magnus, which is the Latin name for the town of Rouen on the other side, as well with, you know, some crosses. This is what you most likely would have seen uh, within the army of William. Now, on the side of Harold II, or on the English side, uh, you would have had uh, a set of coins very much based on uh, Viking Anglo-Saxon designs. Uh, these are silver mostly, uh, some copper. We actually only have eight examples of gold coins from this time period uh, in England. Uh, so they're very rare. It seems they didn't use gold much, uh, including one of King Offa, which actually has the Shahada on it, which is very peculiar and definitely worthy, worthy of a video unto itself. So for example, we have coins here like uh, of King Canute. Point, if you're ever doing something about Canute, make sure your uh, autocorrect is not on. Uh, of course, with Canute, you have a uh, Canute Rex Ang on it, so Canute, King of England, and on the other side, uh, same sort of thing with uh, Athavine of York, or Jorvik, what is now York. This is, Athavine would have been the moneyer, so basically the guy in charge of minting the coins. That was his job, so his name was actually on the coin. Uh, this is before we start seeing mint marks in England, saying London or wherever else. From there, uh, we get coins like that of Edward, uh, Edward the Confessor, so Harold's uh, predecessor. These say, you know, Edward Rex, Edward, King Edward. And then uh, this one, Othburn of Lincoln, or Otterburn of Link. So basically, Othburn of Lincoln, this coin was minted in the town of Lincoln under the moneyer Othburn. And then, of course, we get coins of Harold II themselves. Now, keep in mind, Harold only reigned for less than a year, so we don't have a lot of copies of his coins. So these, Harold Rex Anglia, ta-da, Harold, King of the Ingles, and then Pax, or Peace in Latin, on the other side. That's most likely what the English forces would have had with them. So there you have it. Um, we have our silver den denier. Denier? I need. I, I speak French, so I should be good at Denier, and yet somehow I'm not. Uh, carried by William the Conqueror's troops and our uh, early pennies or early pounds from uh, the English troops, the English Anglo Saxon troops. Of course, we know that this battle was the end of the Anglo Saxon kingdom uh, because William the Conqueror became King of England, and many consider kind of this being one of the real starts of. England as we know it in 1066. Uh, if you go to London, of course, you can still see the tower that he built, uh, the Tower of London. And obviously this left a very important mark on English history, world history, arguably. Uh, if you check out the Bayeux Tapestry, of course, the Bayeux Tapestry is about this invasion. And in fact, we get a lot of very important points that get pointed out, such as the death of uh, Harold and the charge of the cavalry. So that's it for today. Uh, if you have any points that you, you want to mention, mention them in the comments. If you have an idea of what battle you want to see next, send me a message, write it in the comments. Uh, I do do stuff on demand for the most part, so tell me what you think. That's all for today. Bye-bye for now.